I'm Cindy Kuhn and welcome to Tech for EdCat. This week we're going to talk about a new app and a new website by Adobe called Slate. And guess what? It's free. You know me, I'm the queen of free. The first thing you have to do is create an account at Adobe Slate. But nothing to worry about, it is free. So once you've got an account, you're logged in, it's going to look a lot like this on my computer. First thing I'm going to do is click create a new story. But the great thing about it is when I click create a new story, I get this screen that looks a lot like PowerPoint. Now if we switch over to the iPad for a moment, you'll notice that the screen on the iPad looks exactly the same. It's not often that the app and the website for using the tool are identical, but this happens to be the case with Adobe Slate, so that's going to make your life much easier. So back to the computer for a demonstration. First thing I want to do is add a title, so I'm going to call this Slate Tutorial for sake of time. I could add a subtitle or I could choose not to, words, um, images, and links is what we can add. Now right down here below you'll notice we have a little plus sign. When I click that plus sign, here's where I can add a photo. It's pretty obvious what you can do. Now when you add a photo, you could go get them from your computer, you could go get them from Find Photos, and this is important to know about this because Adobe sends you out and they only look for photos from Creative Commons, which means they're copyright friendly. So now you can have a copyright lesson with your students as well. The other thing it does is it automatically adds the copyright attribution information for that photo. So now kids are giving credit where credit is due. Creative Cloud and Lightroom I doubt you'll use much. Those require paid accounts. And if you save photos to Dropbox, and I know a lot of teachers do that because it's a great way to distribute images, you can access your Dropbox accounts. So I'm going to go out and find one from my computer. I've got some prepared here already. And I'm going to go grab this photo. Well, nah, I don't want that one right there. Mm, I want a plain Jane one. I swear I had one. There we go. Sorry about that. So now I've got a photo in there. And before I go any further, I want to show you the, these buttons up here at the top. Themes, Preview, and Share. There are all kinds of themes to pick from. I think there are 11, to be honest. Don't worry about picking a theme in the beginning. This is one of the apps or tools that you can make the whole entire project and change your mind on the theme. You could try every single one of them and it won't mess up your project. That is awesome. That doesn't happen very often. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit and you'll see a little bitty plus sign right here. When I click that, I find all of my tools. So now I can add photos, text, links, a photo grid, and a slide grid. So I'm going to show you a quick example of each of those and then how to publish it. Now this won't be a fancy schmancy one, but you'll get the idea. So if I add a photo, I click, we've already done that, I'll go find one from their photos here. Just to show you how it works, uh, I want an iPad photo, so there we go, I want that one. When I get my photo in here, I get another toolbar where I can make some changes. So this is inline, which means I have some space on either side. I could let my photo fill the screen. I could make it a little narrow bar that as I move, it changes the portion of the photo I see, and I can have a spot to add a caption. Tap on it again. I could make it full width, which means it fills the screen. I could replace it, delete it, or pick a focal point of my picture. I'm going to make this one inline. So it's okay to experiment till you find out what you like. So there's my photo. When I scroll down a bit, right below it is a place to put iPads versus paper. To put a caption in there, and I'm a former journalism teacher, so I kind of believe everything needs a caption. I click my plus sign again. This time I want some text. And what I would do with kids, and I do this myself, I always prepare my text ahead of time. Think of what I'm going to say, and then all I have to do is copy and paste. And with kids, you should have them figure out the whole project ahead of time, plan it out, outline it, script it, whatever works for you, 
and then just have them copy and paste it in. One, it will go much faster, especially if you're in a situation where you have shared devices and multiple kids have to use them. They can prepare that on a different device and then go to the device that they're going to use to create their project with. It'll be much, much faster. When I get my text in there, you'll notice it gives me a little mini word processor. So you can make things bold and italic and put things in quotes and whatnot. So you know how to use a word processor. That doesn't need much explanation. I get my plus sign again. I want to make a link this time. So I want to make a link to the iPad app. So I don't want to go have to go hunt that app, that link up. So here it is right here on my little page. There's the link. I copy and pasted it so I could quickly find it. And I paste it in there. I almost never type links in because I always get them wrong. Here I want to put another link in. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to say website. And I'm going to go back to my little piece of paper here and copy the URL for the Slate website and add that in. I want to center these. So I've selected that one and now it's centered. The one above it isn't centered. I made a mistake. I can click on it, go back, click the edit button, click center, save it, and now it's centered. A couple more things you can do to add a grid. So you go in and you select photos, multiple photos. You have to let it refresh. It's being a little slow right here. There we go. I've got a couple photos in there. I'll add another one just for sake of, there we go. I've got four photos in there. You could add as many as you want. So whenever you want a collection of photos, use the grid. When you've got it the way you want it, click Save. You could add a caption. I'll click the plus sign. What's this grid slideshow? Let me show you an example of what one of these looks like. Then I'll show you what that glider looks like. Here's a project from a sixth grade student about the Colorado River. And Tony Martinez and I were talking about this and I said, oh, if I had to read this report on paper, you might as well just shoot me now. I can imagine reading 30 of these. But if I had a project like this, wow, I don't even mind reading this because look at how nice it looks. Here's all these wonderful photos. We've got pictures of the maps from the states the river goes through. I didn't even know the Colorado River went through five states. So I learned something. Percentages of who gets the water and things you can find there. People that were involved, the historical information, and it keeps going on and on. Here's a picture of the Hoover Dam and the unique things that have been found, the wildlife. This is a pretty involved report. When I get to the end, there's my copyright information right there for every photo that I used. That's pretty awesome. So that's what you're going to have when you get done. Here's a glide show. I click on that. I have to choose a picture. Oh, let's see. Let's pick this one. So here's my picture that I want. And when it finishes loading, I do have a few adjustments I can make, but I'm going to click save. I've got a little plus sign here. And now I can add photos, text, and links. First thing I'm going to add is some text. I'm going to go back to where I already typed my text. And I'm going to grab some. I'm not paying a whole lot of attention to what it says here. I'm going to grab some text, come back over, get my plus sign, click my text, paste, scroll up a little bit. There's my plus sign again. Add a photo. Come over here, add another photo. Get my plus sign. Add a link. Um, I don't have a link on the top of my head, so you could add whatever you wanted to add. We'll pretend we've got a masterpiece here. I probably should preview it, but I don't want to waste time. So the last step you would do would be share it. If you don't share it, nobody's ever going to see it. You can decide whether author attribution needs to be on. If you have younger kids, you might have rules about whether just their first name or last name. So be careful about that. But you have to physically turn it on to put the author's name on it. It's public by default, which is what it should be because it's going to give us a safe URL. You're going to pick a category. I'm going to put this in education. Here's my photo credits of which I can edit and maybe add some of my personal photos on there. Then I click publish. You have to let it do its thing and just be patient, which I know is hard to do. It is for me anyway. When it gets published, now I have a URL that I can copy. 
but I can also grab the embed code. So if I were a school that was using Google Classroom or Blackboard or Edmodo or one of those tools for management, maybe even Weebly or Edublox, I could copy that code and actually embed my project right on my site. So that's Adobe, Adobe Slate in a nutshell. When you get done with the tutorial, there'll also be a link there to a step-by-step -step tutorial with screenshots of everything involved. I hope you find Adobe Slate exciting and are willing to give it a try in your classroom. We'll see you next week.